Great. So I'll officially get us started and a couple more folks might join. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Erin. I'm a tenant organizer at Homeline. I use she, her pronouns, and I live in Minneapolis. I've been um, organizing these webinars for the past eight months or so while we a lot of our lives moved online and we couldn't meet in person. Um, that was challenging, but it also offered a unique opportunity to connect tenants across the state and to talk about organizing um, and to create a, a living resource for tenants who are interested in organizing in Minnesota. So this is our eighth webinar, I believe, and um, we plan to keep going. So we've done a variety of topics and we're always looking for new ideas. So please do reach out to me if you have an idea for a webinar, if you'd like to share your story organizing, um, we're, yeah, we're looking for more ideas. Um, uh, just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, please use the chat to interact during the presentation, but we will hold questions until the end. And I'll ask that you put questions in the Q&A. It's separate from the chat. You can probably find it on the bar uh, below your screen and we'll address questions at the end of the session. Um, tonight we're talking about organizing in manufactured home parks. Uh, this is slightly different than organizing in multi-unit buildings. There are slightly different rights and responsibilities. Um, there are also uh, just slightly different conditions for tenants and I'm really excited to bring two uh, to introduce you to two folks who do this work and have a lot of specific knowledge in this area. The first is Teresa Garcia del Campari. And if you wanted to just say hello or introduce yourself, Teresa. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Teresa. I'm a tenant organizer with Housing Justice Center in Pueblos. And I think based out of home life, <laughs> it's, I have like so many organizations. And um, well, I'm here and I use she, her, on her pronouns. I'll pass it down to Antonia Alvarez. Hi, uh, my name is Antonia Alvarez. I'm president from Pueblos de Lucha en Esperanza and I, and my pronouns is uh, uh, she and her or ella. Thank you. Great. I'm so glad you could both join us tonight. Um, where I'm excited to get started with the program. I'll just do a couple introductory slides here. First is, if you don't know Homeline, we are a tenant advocacy organization. We provide free and low cost um, organizing and educational services. We have a hotline, that's how most folks interact with us. It's um, free, confidential, any tenant in Minnesota can call us and we operate that hotline in four different languages. So if you have a legal question um, that's specific to your situation, please do get in touch with us. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about organizing. Um, none of us here are uh, trained lawyers, I don't believe, and so I won't be able to give any legal advice, but um, other folks I work with can. Um, and just an overview, what is tenant organizing? Um, what's the focus of this webinar tonight? I'm sure many of you watching this don't need to hear, but for those who do, um, tenant organizing is about um, getting together about, around a commonly shared issue and um, believing that collective actions are more powerful than individual actions to address these issues. And tenant organizing often looks like tenant associations that can either be in a building, a neighborhood, um, a mobile home park, that's what we'll talk about tonight. And it's made up of folks who live together, share a common issue, and are ready to exert political, economic, and social pressure to um, get those issues solved. Um, Homeline does advise tenants who live in manufactured home parks. So uh, as long as you're renting your lot, you could still own your home, but as long as you're renting the lot, which most folks in parks are renting the lot, um, Homeline can advise them as tenants. And tenant landlord law does apply to park residents. There are some specificities in that law. The Attorney General's office has a really useful booklet about laws that apply to manufactured home parks. So I put that link here. Um, I'll follow up with you all with this link afterwards. Um, and then I also, another resource that we would refer you to is All Parks Alliance for Change. And then you're gonna hear um, from 
Pueblos de Lucha y Esperanza tonight, or Pueblos MN, and they are also an amazing resource for you all. Um, at Homeline, we don't have a ton of expertise in organizing at mobile home parks because that expertise lives with Pueblos and with All Parks Alliance, so I wanted to offer some additional resources, but please do still call our hotline and make use of our staff attorneys if you live in a mobile home park. That's all that I have for everyone. Um, at this point, I'd love to pass it on to Antonia. Were you gonna speak first? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, talking about uh, uh, what we organized for from Pueblos. I'm um, actually I'm president from Lowry Grove, the mobile home park, and we founded this organization because we fight for keep our house, and we lost the houses in this land, but we win many different issues in the in this continuous struggle. Uh, right now we work in other campaigns. Um, we have the. Um, the work for the campaign for the Tylers and Teresa, she's working this campaign and she's very amazing person. And we continue to have the um, challenge um, because uh, the COVID-19 has affected our communities and we continue these struggles. But uh, for we can start, can you please, uh, Teresa, tell me what is the, um, como, como comenzamos? Perdí la... La conexión un poco. I think you're oh, muted. <laughs> I forget to unmute myself yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, however you want to start, uh, I really, Antonia, um, has been a mentor in showing me the ways of how to organize and uh, training me um, to do this, uh, uh, you know, this activity. I will call it activity. Um, Antonia, it's been a great leader in the community and I've heard about two years ago I started following Antonia um, and learning from her how to organize. Um, we tried two years ago to organize Cedar Knolls, that's the mobile home where I live, and um, the tenants here, including myself, were having a lot of issues. Um, Doña Antonia ha sido usted una persona que ha estado apoyando, es una mentora para mí, la que he estado siguiendo por casi dos años y la que me ha estado enseñando cómo llevar el liderazgo y cómo organizar Ciro Novos desde hace dos años. So, no sé si usted quiera continuar. Um, Disculpen, es que no se pone el silencio y no puedo regresarlo luego. Uh, and I'm sorry for my voice. Last uh, Sunday I have two attacks for asthma and my voice is not very well. But I have the oxygen and, and my, um, uh, ¿cómo se dice? El, el inhalador. Mm -hmm. She had two asthma attacks um, a few days ago and now she's using her inhaler. Oh, wow. Thank you for being here. I think your voice no, is just fine, but yeah, take care of yourself, too. Yeah, yeah I try, Doña, but, sí, dígame, Tere. ¿Usted quiere que yo continúe y usted me, me va acompañando o quiere dar Sí, sí, adelante, Tere. No, no, adelante, adelante, Tere. Sí, por favor. Okay, so, um, what I, since I started with, um, Homeline and doing work with Housing Justice Center, I started organizing here in Cedar Knolls. And my first two uh, events were doing a mobile vaccine clinic. And that took to um, door knocking, uh, talking to some of the tenants here. Um, the, as you see, there is a picture of me with a tenant. Uh, I offer her a manual uh, for manufacturer uh, home um, rights and what to know and what to look for. I also provided a little um, uh, flyers with my name, phone number, uh, in case they had questions. So, um, 
that day I met her, she needed help with uh, an application for rent help. And, and I also gave her the manual and I think believe she got the vaccine that day. This picture is from June 26, uh, where we had different uh, tenants come up and help organize and do the door knocking. Um, it was a really, really big event. Um, I've uh, haven't had much training in it, but I had about a hundred, about a hundred people that day, included new vaccines and second dose vaccines, uh, and then we had also a bike repair uh, that attracted the attention of a lot of the tenants, and I was able to hear some of their um, difficulties with management as well. Um, being a tenant organizer and knowing that I live here, that has created a little bit of retaliation towards some of the tenants and received some negative impact from management towards myself. Um, um, it is hard because you have to know how to level everything and also make sure that you're not damaging the tenants along the way that you're doing the organizing. Um, one of the, um, just to share, one of the things that happened to me that day um, and I felt unsecured of myself was um, I had asked for the vehicles to be removed. Um, just for the event so that way we had enough space and that way um, we knew where to set up and you know where everything was supposed to be and um, the office uh, decided to take the cars and once I approached uh, the manager uh, his uh, response was well you're the boss so if the cars get towed I'm going to send them to you and I was like no you're wrong you're the boss I didn't ask for the car cars to be towed just so they can move it for the event. I left. So this kind of things happen constantly. So um, me walking here in the community, I have to be very careful. Um, make sure that I don't step into management towards uh, the community. Um, I think uh, if you want to move to the next slide, I can, Erin? Uh, I think she froze. Can you see the next slide? Yeah, now I can. I'm sorry, it froze for a moment for me, so I'm gonna have to turn off my camera. Um, so as I ended with Cedar Knowles, I also have encountered another community that it took my interest. Um, this was an old sorry, Tere. Um, I, I'm sorry for uh, interruption you, but there's a Mikael in the back with Erin. I have a kitty. <laughs> yeah, my cat. <laughs> His She's name is Mikael, and, and you have the same Mikael. Oh. Always they like the camera. <laughs> yeah, she's a real star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you? Yeah, I know, I know. You are. You know we're talking about you, right? <laughs> no, that's a good. It's a good interruption. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And <laughs> Teresa, I think that it was my fault that we paused. So your video is probably fine. My internet sometimes goes oh. off, but it's up okay. to you. Okay. Yeah. No, no problem. Uh, so um, here on this slide, I I took some photos of uh, another mobile home community that. Erin uh, invited me to visit with other members. Um, and I found uh, a lot of the tenants there need help. And as a tenant organizer, a new tenant organizer, I need to have all the skills and all the support in order to come into this mobile home community that it really took my interest. And I wanna bring resources to this community as well, um, protection towards them. Um, this is in New Brighton uh, City, and I think it's Oak Grove uh, Park Mobile Home, Erin. Um, okay. they, have, they have complaints about the trees being uh, over their home and touching, and I believe in two occasions trees have fallen on top of the mobile homes. That is a risk, a hazard for the families. Um, 
they, if you see one of the other pictures they has uh, where the power cords and the electrical uh, wires, it looks kind of weird and I think that could uh, spark some sort of danger and hazard to the community as well. Um, they've uh, in the past have uh, felt retaliation from uh, management where they have been called uh, immigration and several tenants have um, been taken and deported. Um, one of the families there um, said, if I do, if, we, if, if you know, we do get help, um, am, are we gonna get in trouble with the manager? And there's just one person that they are really not comfortable with. And that's the manager who handles everything in that park. And I said, no, you shouldn't be being bothered. You know, if something happens, you can always give us a call and you'll have a lot of support from a lot of organizations. So you're not going to be alone this time. Um, Going along with uh, Antonia, I mentioned to Antonia that I had visited this mobile home community and she was the one that brought to my attention as well that uh, Pueblos had been in this community in the past with uh, MIRAC and um, the retaliation for coming to this mobile home community was calling immigration on the tenants who were complaining. Um, they also have a mobile home that has um, were, had suffered a fire and it's covered in yellow tape, which also presents a hazard for the community and the kids um, and it's not being taken care of. Vehicles are being tagged um, with, with signature and a date and being towed. Um, so they don't know their rights and it is important that we as organizers bring the information, bring the resources and get the city involved. Uh, I don't know if it's the district attorney or the general or whoever we need to call in order to get this tenants feel secured and not threatened. They have the right to feel safe and to enjoy the property that they're paying. Um, Antonia, do you want to share anything of what I said? Doña Antonia, ¿quiere compartir algo de lo que acabo de decir? Uh, well, I mean, uh, for the uh, Oak Grove, long history, uh, Salar struggles for the... Uh, uh, no se oye, Doña Antonia. I think we lost you. Okay, so um, okay, um, so this is one of the things. I don't know if anybody else has questions. Uh, they want to ask me something. I'm sorry. I think I lost my internet connection. You're back now. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so I I was say uh, for my experience about the Oak Grove uh, uh, community. Um, and my experience with Lowry Grove. In Lowry Grove, we have very, very uh, a strong campaign, but I just speak with every single person and I, I ask about the, the history. You have record, you have criminal record, you have deportation, everything I need know. Some of the people, they feel uncomfortable, but that's very important for myself. Uh, recognize the history because when the people they was have deportation, I never put them in the front of these people. And they don't know in Oak Grove, this, uh, one of the leaders' families, they have these, uh, these records. And for 10 years ago, and they believe it's not, and the system is no record. So they are in the Star Tribune in the first page, all this family, and that's when ICE has come. So that not only the manager, they know the eyes, they recognize the pictures when you put it in the Star Tribune and the, and the principal page, of course they recognize yourself. So that's what happened in, in this community. In Lowry Grove, we know nobody. They call ICE, the owners call ICE many different times and they never arrested one person because we have a strategy. 
and the strategy sometimes is very hard because you know you're not sleeping for protecting the community you need to speak with every single person you need uh speak with the white community outside to the neighborhood association you need to have many different strategies but you need mobilization more people and that's what happened in, in lowry grove and is when <laughs> what happened they mistake with um with uh oak grove thank you Oh, Teresa, I think you're on, you're muted again. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I don't know if anybody has any questions or should we just jump to the next um, slide? Yeah, let's, I don't see any questions immediately. So let's go to the okay. next slide, if that sounds right. Okay. Uh, this one, um, this is where a lot of the team is feel like they don't have the freedom of expression. So I thought this was something good that um, the residents cannot be prohibited from expressing themselves and organizing um, and not feel like they're going to be having some sort of retaliation because if they bring help from outside. And a lot of the times this is, um, it's being taken away from the tenants. Um, I don't know, um, two years ago here in uh, Cedar Knowles, I had walked down uh, the community in Flyard for about an hour. And uh, later on, I asked some of the tenants, did you get the flyer? And they goes, nope, we saw the office going by and taking the flyers down. So um, the, our freedom is is being taken away and our freedom to ask for help is being taken away and that is a right that everybody should have and not feel afraid to to say something because of that retaliation from management um i know many of the people that live in our communities are undocumented and um unfortunately are being shushed a lot <laughs> and I, I just, and this, I, and, and Oak Grove, uh, Tere, uh, uh, mm -hmm. when I have the, um, uh, I have the signatures for 98, uh, f uh, percent the families, they have the resident associations, and mm -hmm. probably more than the 80 percent is Latino immigrants in documented. That's why the people, they feel afraid. I have this information with me. Okay, well, it will be good to have that information and maybe sometime next week, uh, definitely sit down together and share that information with uh, Aaron and myself. Um, one of the, um, another thing is, you have the right to have your basic, your basic needs met. And if you're paying for it, you should you have rights. If you are maintaining your lot area clean, you should not be bothered. Um, if if you have a complaint, you should not be turned away, or you should not be yelled at, or you should not be scolded, um, you should not be made to feel inferior. Um, just had a, a family um, here at Cedar Knowles again, <laughs> um, and I'm mentioning a lot of Cedar Knowles because I know a lot of the tenants here and one of the families uh, minutes before I entered their home was completely nervous and, and almost crying and she says Teresa I just got yelled at by management and it's either my dog or I leave and I go no and I got a hold of um, you know uh, one of the co-workers that I know in, in a meeting, I discussed that and I also sent her a message beforehand and um, they are threatened really right away and, and they don't know how to handle it because the information on how to react and what to do and if it's gathered by paper or by voice, how do you handle that? And as soon as they get a call, they take it at its 100% and they actually don't have anything in writing so they're being threatened that way and their their spirit uh, it's being crushed um 
another uh, family at a different mobile home park also as well. Um, if her child uh, has, she has I have really bad emergency right now with my family. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you for okay. being here, Antonia. Yeah, please okay. take care. I'm so sorry for this That's mistake. totally okay. Yeah. Thank you for what thank you shared tonight. Okay, bye. Bye. So um, another family, another mobile home community has a child with a disability. And this child um, likes to take his clothes off. And before he, he got out of the car and ran inside, but once he got into their, his home, he was half naked. And the office threatened that if they didn't stop this, um, also with other community members, said, we gave you the mobile home, we're able to take that mobile home away from you if this doesn't stop. Nothing again in writing, nothing, uh, it was just all verbal, but the threat from management and other community members threatened the family to take their home away was also wrong. So. Um, they're afraid and like, oh, I'm gonna lose my home. I said, no, you're not, you're not going to lose your home. There is ways that we can, we can actually fix this. You know, it's not right for them to take something away from you when it's already in writing that it's been, it's yours. Um, and one of the things that I encounter is that many of them don't have their title. They're not, they're afraid to come about and say, I need help with this because they don't know the information. They don't have those resources coming to them. Um, so um, that's one of the things that I'm doing right now is talking and listening to their stories and trying to see who needs their titles. So that way they can have reassurance that this mobile home is theirs. In case something happens to them, there's, you know, they, they have that ownership, that title that makes it theirs and they're able to sell their mobile home. Um, you want to uh, move down to the other slide? I think that's okay. So, um, I, I it's all over the place, so I do apologize. Um, this was uh, the event for the bike repair uh, for the vaccine, so we had the bike repair, and then um, there is one of our um, members there standing as a volunteer and uh. And then you can see it's Regan right there, helping with the bike repair. <laughs> um, this kind of thing is it's good to bring to the community. It, it brings up um, a great resource for the kids. There were a lot of kids that needed bike repairs. And one of my projects is to help bring this inside every community and get to know the families talk to them and me getting the option to ask them about their title and at the same time trying to figure it out if we need a residence association to help them uh, navigate the problems that they're having in their community. The vaccine was another great thing that we did uh, with uh, Pueblos. Antonia was uh, the one that um, secured the lines for me to get the vaccine with Christchurch. And that was a great thing as well. Um, some of the tenants here had not received great attention, great support from a clinic or from the county. And when we brought this, they felt the support and the treatment that they received was not, it didn't compare to what they were receiving outside. Um, if we can move to the next slide. Um, so from having that event and talking to them, I also encountered some uh, things from the community uh, members that usually management uh, walks into their property uh, without a notice uh, or they call for something to be repaired and or they're just there, they just walk in without asking for permission. So their privacy, it's also not being met. Um, they, they don't feel comfortable uh, by seeing their truck going by many times because they feel like they're being supervised like children. Um, so that way becomes the privacy, that we have that privacy. They cannot enter unless it's an emergency or they're there to, support or help or fix something that pertains to the lot. 
Um, so uh, it has happened to me in the past and it's happened to other residents as well here in the community. So um, I don't know if anybody else uh, has anything, questions? Yeah, that's, that's so awesome to hear about all of this, Teresa. Um, I don't, I'm not seeing any questions yet. If anyone wants to put one in the chat, we can address it right away. Um, do you have a couple more slides or is this? I think that was pretty much it that I came up with. Um, right. Like I said, I kind of was nervous because I don't, it's my first time and I don't have the experience. Um, You're with, awesome. <laughs> did a great job. She always helps me, so. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Meg. I think that was pretty much it. Uh, I don't know uh, any, you know, anybody has any suggestions or wants ideas, but you know, communicating with organizations outside of um, Homeline and just gathering those partnerships, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard for me. So um, trying to get them to communicate with me, it's, it's difficult. Um, so I don't know if it's because I'm always nervous or I don't know what to say, but um, one of the other things that I uh, managed to do was to get uh, open door for pantry here in the community mm. and provide food for the event. And uh, I've, I want to also gather them for, see if we're able to bring them to New Brighton and see if um, they're just, ideas uh, see if we can get that resource down at New Brighton Mobile Home Park and see if management would allow them and then maybe that we get to know more of uh, the problems and um, fears that the community is facing right now um, well, that's I don't know if you have any questions uh, yeah, I'd love to hear questions from folks. Um, Teresa, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, yes, it would be in my email. Uh, I can write it in the chat. Um, Great, that would be awesome. And, um, and then we can take a couple questions. I'm um i'm noticing i don't think i can click on the q a box for some reason tonight but anyway so just if you're able to write your question in the chat that would be the best way um to to get it to Teresa. and this is the the right email to get in touch with her um i'll i could start with a question just to get us started i wanted to say Teresa, first of all thank you for all of this information um i was really struck by the um, the vulnerabilities you described of working with folks with mixed status or document being undocumented, and I was wondering if you could talk a little more about how you um, how you approach organizing in communities of undocumented folks. Like, what are some ways that you build trust? Um, what are some of your considerations? How do you talk to people about the risks that they might take on? Um, if you have advice for other organizers out there who are are in community with neighbors who might be undocumented and want to organize, right? One of the thing is, I like to always, um, if I'm knocking on a door, I always like to announce, you know, it's me. I'm here. I try to do like a joke, and just, you know, nothing bad. And I just try to make make it as friendly as possible. I said, I'm not here to sell anything, but I'm here to give you information about me. So just come out and, you know, just make it seem like there's somebody there, somebody that they can trust. They, I kind of build that relationship. I like to make jokes and um, they they seem to look to like that because I had several of them in uh, New Brighton community that they were right away opened the door and said, you know, somebody who speaks Spanish, come out, come out, you know, and right away they opened and they were they were willing to talk. Um, one of the thing is that if they saw a lot of if they see somebody else that looks like them, 
they feel more comfortable. I see if a, a lot of them come in and they don't look like them, then they tend to close the doors because um, sometimes it represents a threat because they end up losing their home, their children. Um, they end up losing the most dear that they have, which is their family. And, oh, I'm about to cry. Oh, my goodness. So um, that's the way I do. Um, they see me walking. I say hi to everybody. One thing that I definitely wanted to make sure the day that I had the two events was not to have the police come over to my event. Uh, I made it clear to Christchurch and to made to pass the information to management that I didn't want the fire department or the or the police there. Um, as we are as a community are policed a hundred percent every day. Um, there is not a time that we don't have a cop at the park watching the neighborhood and stopping right away the tenants and having that sense of security was important for me to have no police that day um they are not comfortable especially if they don't have a license and that's a threat you don't have a license you know they can't actually get you into jail you lose you won't be able to come out or um, you get the tickets and then you know the main provider of the home it's the dad and and usually they are the ones exposed a hundred percent every day you know going out of their home so if the home where they're at the community is being policed that is a threat then i won't be able to create that relationship with them so I am very protective of my community and I made it clear that day. Um, I had a good turnout and I definitely want more people who speak Spanish, they're bilingual to actually come out and learn and be there and walk and bring the resources that this, that this community need. Um, they are the most vulnerable, the most oppressed, and the most that they they call bad names because mobile homes uh, usually tend to be dirty and uh, only poor purely the poorest people live there and it's trashy and uh, and that is not true that is not true and that is something it's a stereotype that needs to be changed um, there's laws that need to be changed um, the amount of cars um, how many spaces people can have in order to, for their vehicles to be, you know, safe and not be towed. Um, there is a lot of things that uh, needs to be done, and I have so little time to do it and so little knowledge to get it done. Um, so it is important that we change that knowledge, that we are not trashy. It's not a white trash trailer park, which is a lie, which it was implemented by the president when mobile homes started to come out. So um, we need to change. There is business owners. There is um, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in the manufactured home community. And it's a thriving community. It's uh, not middle class, but it's a class that is actually working hard to supply their needs. And there have they're working so we're not bad we're not criminals it's not the part it's not the bad side of the city like it was called here that's the bad part of the neighborhood it's really bad and we need to change that it, it needs to change so um if there's like again if you have any suggestions questions uh do send them over i would love to hear what you would like to say and um i apologize if i went back and forth and i, I never yeah. done it before no so. problem. this is yeah um this is great and thank you for for the answer to that question and everything you shared about it and certainly prejudice and discrimination around mobile home residents is a really serious issue that needs to be changed and especially the um the discrimination and the, the 
the, the violence of calling ICE on folks who are undocumented is um, absolutely unacceptable. And the stakes of that are really high, you know, and this is part of why I, I'm an organizer and believe in the power of organizing is because all we have is each other, you know, and, um, and we keep each other safe and knowing your neighbors, um, like knowing what they need, knowing um, what their vulnerabilities are, building trust among community is, is one way that we keep each other safe and, um, and build power together. So thank you. Yeah. For that. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, thank you. I definitely, we all deserve our basic needs and be able to enjoy life and no matter if you're undocumented or not, you, you deserve respect and value and honor. And um, if you don't have it, then you need to be supported. Um, mobile home communities, especially the undocumented, cannot be terrorized by management, cannot be terrorized by immigration by calling them. That is against a, a distancy leaving and crushing your, your spirit, you can't do that. You're, you're terrorizing and that is, I believe that is wrong completely. Um, yeah, and it's up to us to change it, so. Yeah, and um, this is related to a question that I saw from Kara in the Q&A that I'll hand to, over to you, Teresa, which is, Kara's asking, what would you say is the biggest difference, difference or, or some of the biggest differences between organizing in, uh, in a multifamily, like an apartment building versus at a mobile home park? Oh, that, you know what, that is a very good question. Actually, I was reading something about it today. Um, it didn't, it didn't, and not everything stuck with me, but um, tenant uh, apartments have more rights and are more protected than mobile home communities. We are actually excluded from that protection. Um, that's, um, it is difficult because their laws are different uh, from the apartment complexes. I, I don't know if I'm wrong in, in that, but that's what I read. So that part stuck with me. And um, where, where different rules and the law doesn't protect us as the regular tenants in apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Answers the question. <laughs> yeah, it does. Thank you. And I'm not an expert in in that um, in the the legal differences between tenant law for people who are in buildings versus at a mobile home park. But I do know it's different, and there are different vulnerabilities. And one one um, ad, ad, you know advantage or, or one right that is strong in mobile home parks, as far as I know, is that there is established right to have a, a resident association and um, management has to accept the establishment of a resident association with 51% of the, of the tenants there. And so, you know, how much management then respects the resident association or actually, you know, listens to those desires, I, I don't know, but at least they have to, um, not prevent its its formation and um that's one piece i know but again i would refer folks to um the handbook at the attorney general that's out of the attorney general's office which is useful and then also all parks alliance for change has quite a number of resources especially around know your rights um and i'll just go back to the the slide i had here for those resources all Parks also runs a, a tenant hotline specifically for mobile home residents. So um, any questions can be directed there too. And then of course there is much, much knowledge and experience at Pueblos and um, you all are an amazing resource for these questions as well. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have, have a question for us? Or Teresa, is there something else that you'd like to share? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. um, I'll, I'll ask one more question here. Um, let's see, I was thinking about, um, you, you spoke to the, your experience 
with as a mobile home resident and um, some of the um, the ideas about mobile home parks that are that are prejudiced. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about we started to talk about like the vibrancy of, of the community you live in and uh, who's there and I was wondering if you could just speak a little bit to your experience living in a park and um, the relationships you have with your neighbors and the strength of the community and just just tell us a little about the community that you're from and work with. Um, I'm from um, Cedar Knolls and I've been living here in this community uh, recently 11 years. Um, uh, I have prior uh, history here um, since 2002. Um, Things have changed from 2002 to now. Um, before they used to gather, give the tenants an opportunity to, you know, um, get rid of whatever they didn't want to. So the community management would bring a big dumpster and provide it for the entire community. So they would do an April cleanup. That changed. Um, uh, apparently more, uh, the rent increase, you know, the rent increase every year. Uh, the treatment from management has changed. Um, you have sometimes feel like you don't, you're not safe. You don't feel comfortable. Um, if you go to management, are they going to yell at you? Um, how are they going to treat you? Or if you don't pay your rent right away, you get a notice. Or you have a bike outside, right away you get a notice. Um, it's just sometimes doesn't feel comfortable. Um, but when it comes to talking to the tenants and creating the relationships with them, and you, every weekend, uh, especially if you live in a community where they probably have the population of the community is Latino, you have music every Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So, uh -huh. So you you have the parties and obviously you're going to have you're gonna have a lot of people coming over. So um and that creates a problem with management because sometimes our the outings go probably past a little bit ten thirty and then we're, we're actually damaging curfew, you know, you're not supposed mm -hmm. to be after a certain hour in the noise so uh that you know i've i need to get that across to the community and some of them are starting to understand that at a certain time you can have loud music uh sometimes for a little bit of noise or sometimes because the dog ran out you you are getting pulled out or wow. it, the police comes and lets you know that your pet has ran out and so um Besides that neg negativity, kids are playing outside. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to safety, uh, I wish there was more lighting in our community. Uh, there's not enough, there is dark spots. And we did have, I believe, a, a rape in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a girl was coming out of the gas station and you know there was a dark spot and uh, she was helpless. and um, that we need more lighting. Um, we need uh, speed bumps. Uh, cars fly through the main roads and private roads when they're trying to get away from the cops. Um, there is there is nothing that is being done by management to take care of that. So um, that's one thing that I would love to see change here: speed bumps and um, maybe changing the tone of voice from the management towards the people who are feeding his pocket. Um, because if everybody stops or leaves, they are not going to have a job. So um, the respect needs to be there. Um, and just having a sense of security that you know, you're know you being respected, you're paying your hard earned money, no matter how you're earning it, but you're paying it, at least provide something for the community. Mm -hmm. um, do the change. Don't forget that even though we're easy, passive money making, you, that you don't have to repair things. You do have to repair things. You're accountable for that because it's your land. It's, you know, how if you were renting, we're giving you our money. And that means you provide 
and you change things. Um, only because where it's a manufactured home community doesn't mean that you're not going to take care of it. Um, and that I would like to have changed as well. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'll, um, if, if anyone else has any questions, please write them in the chat. But for now, I'll, I'll also just um, offer some, some remarks that uh, we talked about, you know, the difference between organizing in an apartment building and versus a mobile home park and there are differences and I'm struck by the similarities and one of those similarities being that um, renters are both uh, over policed and and um, by police and also by their landlords like the renters don't have full autonomy over their lives in the same way that homeowners um, enjoy that privilege to um, you know, to determine how loud they're going to be until when, or it, all these rules, extra rules that are placed on renters, both in buildings and in mobile home parks, that are fundamentally unfair, and everyone deserves autonomy over their lives. And um, and then by the same token, rental housing and mobile home parks are underinvested in, and are under um, are not paid attention to, and are are not given the attention and resources they deserve. And so both over-policed and under-invested, and, and this is the state of, of rental housing, no matter where you're renting, and it's something that needs to change, uh, needs to change now, should have changed a long time ago, and that's part of what we're fighting for. And um, the the power that's being built in, in mobile home parks through resident associations, I would love to see you know, coalitions or, or ways that those groups are able to work together and be in community with the associations built in buildings and um, everything that we talked about tonight is making me think more about that and how that's possible. And um, yeah, I'll just maybe leave, leave you all with that thought and that idea too as, as we close. Um, yeah. And it is possible to change. And I'm going to tell you, it is possible down in, um, Cesar Chavez, where it used to be called Concord Street on West St. Paul, one of the apartments there where they were, they were thinking to demolish, there were the bluff, uh, bluff apartments now called. Mm -hmm. And I remember, uh, and I think I shared this with a cohort when I was starting, um, they asked me, I had the Star Tribune ask me what I thought about it, and that I was what, 16 or 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, no, you can't tear it down. There's very good families living there. Me being one of the you know, persons living in those apartments and growing up there, growing up there was important for them to be restored or you know, not to throw them, you know, just to demolish the place. And I know there was another family recently that I learned that was also behind the change. and it was changed. They were restored, they were named differently, and they're still up today. So it depends, I think, on the heart of the owner as well, or the company. But definitely, things can get done as long as we put a lot of pressure for that change to happen. And um, knowing the complete full laws and how to go about it because they're 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 twisty and confusing and some of them i don't get but um i'm sure that it's possible to change and it's possible to add things to the manufactured home community uh so they can also enjoy the property and take all the way all the stereotypes and all the mistreatment that goes on for the tenants either apartment or manufactured absolutely yes and um, we got some amens and thank yous and appreciations in the chat. Um, so I want to share that with you, Teresa. And I want to express thank you to everyone who's here tonight for being a part of this conversation. And thank you to everyone who might watch this at, at some other point. Um, it's, I, you're right, Teresa, we can, we can make change. Um, and I know that because we're all here together. So that's powerful. Um, thank you again, Teresa, so much for what you shared. And thank you to Antonia uh, for what she offered as well. This has been incredibly informative for me and meaningful. Um, and I'm so excited to be in organizing community with you and with everyone who's um, here tonight. So thank I'll, you everybody. I'll end this. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.